Hello everyone and welcome back to Retrobate and welcome back to the Commodore 64 Wonders, where this new episode will be concerning the year 1990 and 10 of the finest games you will ever play on your Commodore 64. We start off in 10th place with Dormark's licensed classic Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters. I remember back when I saw this in 1992 when it came out on a budget label, the first thing that drew me to this game like many many others was the artwork. The cover of this game is my favourite cover art of all time bar none. Anyway, back to the game. One of the things I do want to mention is that this game was an all-in-one loader, which meant that there was no annoying multi-load levels. I think the Commodore 64 version is a really decent conversion of a fast and playable coin-up. I think the graphics are good, I think the in-game music's decent, but also, it's a two-player game. Always a winner in my book. F-16 Combat Pilot, as you can probably tell by the name of the game, is a flight simulator that was published by Digital Integration. I was hugely into military aircraft as a kid and it was just natural that I wanted to test out my skills on my trusty Commodore 64. And what better way than to be flying the F-16 Fighting Falcon. F-16 Combat Pilot is an all round decent flight sim. Yes, it's no Project Stealth Fighter or Gunship, but I had a lot of fun playing this back in the day. Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge is an arcade racing game that was published by Gremlin Graphics. This game, like many others in the videos I've made, always comes into its own when there's a two player mode involved and this was a class two player with a split screen. There's plenty of life in this game as well considering there are 32 torturous tracks packed with additional hazards like huge boulders, slippery oil spills and water pools to hamper your progress. The game is a lot of fun, it has excellent presentation, different control options, skill levels, track records, there's even a choice of three different tunes to accompany your hectic race in action. As we move into 7th, we're greeted by Creatures, the absolutely gorgeous looking Thalmus game. In this game, you play Clyde Radcliffe, who's the brave little third ball who's got to rescue his friends. But before you get a chance to reach any of his three friends, you must first get through the two horizontally scrolling stages, where you'll be leaping on platforms and battling all the weird residents with his droopy bullets and your fiery throat flamer, which is used by holding down the fire button. This is difficult enough, but the sense of real urgency is created by a real tight time limit. In sixth is Ocean's Navy Seals, a game that I have got such a love-hate relationship. There's so much that I love about this game, but it's incredibly frustrating and difficult at times. But just listen to that music. That is some of the best sit chip music on the Commodore 64. Matthew Cannon, take a bow. The graphics on this game are absolutely stunning and superbly animated. There was also stunning inter-level screens. This game, as I've said, it starts off tough, but once you start taking your time and getting used to it, it really does open up to a fantastic challenge. Power Drift, published by Activision, is a Sega arcade coin-up conversion. And considering my thoughts on a lot of Commodore 64 racing games, what a conversion we did get. Activision should be complimented for their valiant effort at bringing this conversion to the Commodore 64 with 25 circuits spread over 5 courses with 12 characters to choose from and all in one load. The graphics move fast, they're very detailed and you also get a solid 3D effect which is an awesome illusion of riding over hills. So we're coming to the business end of 1990 and here's some of the big guns coming out because next in 4th we've got Rainbow Islands which was published by Ocean. The sequel to the classic Bubble Bubble coin-up turned Bob and Bub back from bubble-blowing dinosaurs back into human form. Unfortunately, the Commodore 64 version has omitted the coin-ups a simultaneous two-player mode, but apart from that, it's superb in every other aspect. The graphics are as good as they could be, they're a little bit blocky, but that's how it was in the coin-up. And then of course you've got the sound effects, which is the usual tune, but with a lot of levels, this will keep you interested for quite a while. 
Into the top three, and we've got Ocean Shoot Move Platformer Midnight Resistance. First thing to mention about this game is definitely get it on disc. Unfortunately, if you're a tape owner like myself and you do die on level one, you still have to reload the game. On to the good bits though, the graphics, yeah, they are lovely. I love these big chunky graphics. We've got lovely animation as well. The music, I absolutely love, really great tune. Last ability, well, you've got nine varied levels, which should provide a substantial challenge. Overall, a great conversion. In second place, we've got Ivan Iron Man Stewart Super Off Road, which will probably be a surprise to quite a few people. However, this is probably my second favourite racing game on the Commodore 64, only behind Stunt Car Racer. I can't help but have a huge amount of nostalgia for this for the first time I ever played it on a cover tape, and it was one of the few games that I did buy at full price. I find this game so much fun to play. It's easy to get into, it's got great graphics, and the music's really good as well. And in top spot, yes you've guessed it, it is quite an amazing achievement on the Commodore 64. It is of course, Turrican from Rainbow Arts. There's probably not much I can say about Turrican that hasn't been said before, but here goes. This is in case you've been living on the moon for the last 30 years. You've got 13 levels that are absolutely packed with variety, detailed imagination and some unbelievable end of level baddies, and these are graphically superb. The difficulty level eases you in nicely at first, but it doesn't half ramp up later on in the game. But don't worry, because you do get three continues. This is without doubt one of the greatest games to ever grace the Commodore 64. Well, what a year 1990 was. I remember it so well. I remember being there, buying these games and absolutely adoring every one of them. But if you think these are good, wait until you see 1991. And the best way of doing that is by subscribing to my channel. So don't miss out and subscribe today. Until next time, goodbye.